G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Caitlin. I'm an American writer living in beautiful Sydney, Australia, and I am getting ready to embrace my third winter living here in Australia. As much as I'm used to snow, cold weather, and polar vortexes over in the States, nothing could really prepare me for my first winter here in Australia, and as I'm getting ready for my third winter here, I want to share some tips with you guys and maybe hear from you guys in the comments down as well. So here are some ways to survive a cold Australian winter because believe me, it does get cold here. Grab a bicky, grab a cuppa, and let's get right into this video. Number one is if you have any fans in your house, check to see if they have one of those summer and winter switches. Because once the weather gets cold, you're definitely going to want to switch that fan from summer to winter. I feel like this is pretty common for fans here and something I never saw in fans over in the States. But we only have one fan in our house and it actually does have the summer winter switch. I didn't know about it until I was actually cleaning our house about six months ago, cleaning all the dust off of those blades and actually noticed for the first time that we do have a summer and winter switch on our fan. So once the weather gets a little bit too chilly here and I'm gonna have to wear something that isn't quite so short sleeved, we're definitely gonna be putting that to winter mode. Number two is know how the heating units in your house work. Also the cooling units, because you might be surprised that your cooling units, some of them do actually double as heating units as well. Now, there are some old school Aussie homes where you don't have heating units in your wall, you actually have an old school fireplace, so you gotta make sure that you have enough wood stocked up, that everything is cleaned, because that might be your main source of heating for the entire house the rest of winter. Luckily, we actually have a wall unit that doubles as a heating and cooling unit, so once it gets too cold, we just switch from cold to warm, and we just turn the heater on and it warms up most of our house. But that's relatively recent. We've had that for less than a year. Before that, we were relying pretty heavily on layering up and mostly using space heaters. So if your house doesn't have a heating unit, or say you primarily stay in just one room of the house for most of the day and you don't want to spend the money to heat the entire house, maybe look into investing in a couple space heaters because that can save you a good chunk of money. Number three is if you're in homes that are particularly older homes, make sure you check for cracks in the doors and the windows. Australian homes, especially older homes, don't have a lot of insulation. So making sure that you have closed off any drafty areas is probably going to be the best way to make sure that you're trapping all of the heat inside your house as much as possible because with how little insulation there is in older Aussie houses, you can have your heat turned all the way up and your house would still be freezing cold, especially if you don't treat any drafty airways where all that warm air can slip right out. So before it gets too cold, make sure you go around, check all the windows for drafts, check the doors for drafts, and if you need to, get a couple of draft stoppers for the bottom of your doorways. Number four is if you are just moving over to Australia, make sure you research what winters are like in the place that you're moving to because winter in Tasmania is going to be completely different from winter in the Northern Territory. And I'm pretty sure a winter in Brisbane is going to be very different from a winter in Adelaide. Obviously, the farther south you go, the colder it's going to get. But Australia has a wide variety of climates, so make sure that you know what the area you're moving to is like. Number five is get ready to pull out your good roast and soup recipes because Australians, for the most part, eat seasonally. In the States, I got a little bit spoiled with just how readily available everything was all year round, so eating seasonally didn't really occur to me until I moved here. Yes, I'd normally save like the soups and stews and roast for when it was cold outside, but you can still get relatively fresh berries and whatnot if you wanted to make like a sort of summery salad in the middle of winter over in the States. In Australia, that's not the case. There are some foods that just aren't available at certain times of the year. So make sure you either have your recipes ready or learn how to cook things like roasts and stews and soups because that is something you are definitely going to want to rely on when the weather gets cold and you need to find some way to heat your house because let me tell you, turning the oven on and using it to bake breads, to roast meat, to make stews and pies and whatever else you want to is a great way to keep the house warm. Number six is if you don't have carpet in the house, which is pretty common, most places seem to have hardwood now, you might want to consider investing in a couple of rugs or throw rugs. Not only do they keep your feet warm if you have to walk on them barefoot, but it also does help keep the heat inside a little bit more. You don't have all that cold sleeping right through the hardwood. The rugs act a little bit as a buffer. And if you have pets, I'm sure they're going to appreciate that extra warm fabric right around this time of year compared to the cold hardwood floors. Number seven is you might want to think about investing in a pair of indoor slippers. Now, I know a lot of people are different when it comes to walking around the house with the same shoes that you use to walk around outdoors. I know that there are some cultures who live here as well 
that have their own sort of traditions when it comes to this. Some have their own specific outdoor shoes, while some have their own indoor shoes. But if the thought of indoor slippers never occurred to you or indoor shoes never occurred to you, you might want to invest in a warm pair of slippers or inside the house boots. So let me tell you, just walking around in a pair of socks is not going to be enough on those cold floors. I actually have a pair of house slippers that I pretty much only wear when it's winter time around here. I'll actually link them down below. They are from UGG. I did get them from Amazon and they keep my feet so toasty and so warm when I'm here, especially when I'm working from home. So if you haven't, maybe consider investing in a pair of indoor slippers. It's actually a pretty big game changer when winter hits in Australia. Now what to look for when you're shopping for winter clothes here. I've always been somebody who layers the same dresses that I wear in spring, I'll wear in summer, I'll wear in winter, I'll just throw a cardigan or something like that over it. But know what you're going to need when it comes to winter clothes because one common thing here are puffer jackets or even puffer vests. You're not going to find a lot of pea coats or even a lot of trench coats over here in Australia when winter hits. For some reason puffer coats are like the fashionable in go-to item that people wear here for winter. Or if you have a little bit of a tougher skin, then you just wear hoodies or maybe you have a leather jacket. But before you bring all of your winter clothes over here, you might want to see what the fashion actually is like over here if you're somebody who cares about that. Especially if you're somebody who's going to be working in offices and whatnot every day, you do not want to stick out like that American walking around. If you're going clothes shopping here, think about things that you can actually buy in layers here. Because even though there is a sort of seasonality to the clothes here, there are a lot of dresses that you can wear in winter that you could probably get away with in spring and fall here too. Whereas in the States, it felt like you had to have a particular wardrobe for each season. Here, it's a lot more common to layer and mix and match throughout the seasons. So when you're shopping for clothes, don't think about just what you can wear for the next three months. Think about what you can wear for the next six months, for the next year. Chances are that really heavy cardigan is not something that you're going to be wearing when it hits 40 degrees summer days. It might be something that you could wear during spring and during fall too. Don't worry too much about shopping seasonally. Shop in layers here know how your skin reacts to dry cool weather. For some reason when I moved to Australia the winter just made my skin so much more dry than it ever had in winters in the states. And winters in the states I dealt with snow, I dealt with polar vortex winds, but for some reason my skin was never as dry as it is since moving here. So be prepared, you might have to mix up your skin routine when it comes to winter time here in Australia and the products you use back in the states might not be as good as the products that you can get here and your skin might react completely differently to winters here too. So that's it for my video, you guys. Tips on surviving a cold, cold winter here in Australia after surviving two winters and getting ready for my third. So is there anything on this list that surprised you? Let me know down below. If you guys have any more comments, tips, or tricks, because I know I just live in Sydney. You guys are from all over the country. Everybody has different tips from wherever they're living, so let us know in the comments down below. Share your knowledge. That's it for this video, you guys. And if you liked it, I hope you did. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button down below. I really do appreciate the support, you guys. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye.